<laughs> abiding. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about abiding. Everything that you're going to see, everything you're going to hear, everything that's going to keep coming out is all about abiding. All about living. Because Jesus called us to live an abundant life. Jesus called us to live with that everlasting eternal life in us now. I love John 17, 3. It says, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And I love that. That's eternal life. A lot of people think eternal life is heaven. When we get to heaven, no, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He wants us to know Him. He wants us to be connected to Him. He wants us to live in Him and not just live like, yeah, we're in the house, but abide. There's a lot of people that live in their home, but they're really not there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, it's the truth. Sometimes you got moms or dads that it seems like they're just going through the motions. They're really not connecting. They're not there. Because look at how many homes we have that are in all kinds of dysfunction. You know what I mean? You know for yourself, have you ever been in a situation, school I guess would be actually a very easy one, you have to go to school, it is what it is, you've got to get your grades, so when it comes to living, think about, do you go to school and abide, when you're there, you're there, or do you go to school just to get it done and move on about your business? Hello? You see what I'm saying? That's not living. He wants us to live. And tonight, we're going to start in John 15. And then throughout the next 10 weeks in this series, we're going to talk to you about how to abide when. How to abide when things are hard. How to abide when things are really busy. How do you abide with Jesus when things are like going, 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 going? How do you abide when it seems like everybody else around you is doing good and you don't feel like you are? How do you abide when you fall? How do you abide when things are actually just calm? We want you to understand what it means to live, to abide. That is really our prayer and our heart for this series. So to find out what it means to abide, we got to look at John 15 and really connect with the vine that you just heard about. So 15, we're going to read verses 1 through 4 for right now. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. He wants you to bear fruit. He wants you to be connected. I, love I am the vine, okay? My father is the gardener. And every branch in me that does not bear good fruit, he cuts off. Think about your life. If you know Jesus, you're already connected to the vine. You are already a branch. So it's you I want to talk to right now. If you know Jesus, you're the one I'm talking to right now. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he cuts off. He prunes so that I can be more fruitful. In my life, there are things as I walk my faith in Jesus Christ. There are times as I'm living for him that there is something that needs some pruning. You know what I mean? Um, maybe, maybe there's times where I get so wrapped up in going, 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 and he needs to come in and prune all of my go, 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 so I can remember what it means to sit and be still and know that I am God. 
Because he wants me to bear fruit. And sometimes I can get too busy that I'm missing something. And he needs to prune something off of me. Sometimes we have friendships and relationships. Um, I was talking with a brother this week um, via text. He does not live anywhere near here. He's living on the East Coast. And uh, he was just talking. And he was dealing with a friendship that was really a conflict. And he said, I don't know how to communicate to this friend that we need to take time out. We need to separate for a season. And we prayed through that and we talked through that. But do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had those things where you and maybe somebody else, you just constantly are grading on each other? Anybody ever been there? And sometimes you just need to. You love them so much, but you feel God saying, I need to prune that right now because... You're not focusing in on me. You're too busy caught up in that. So he prunes. Because he wants you to bear fruit. He wants you to bear fruit. So what does that fruit mean? We actually talked about this in the spring freedom um, back in April and May. One of the elements of fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. He wants you to show those things. And if there's an area of your life where you are not showing the love of Christ, he will, again, I'm talking to the believer. If there's an area where you're not showing the love of Christ, he will step in and prune so that you can learn how to show the love of Christ. He's faithful to do that because he knows you want to bear fruit in his name. If maybe you're not showing kindness, he's going to prune you to where you will show kindness. Maybe you're not showing goodness. Remember that quality of goodness that says, you're not going to like this right now, but we need to do this because in the long run, you're going to see it's helping keep you from sin. Well, maybe you need some goodness in your life so he's going to come in and adjust the situation. You know, there's times that sometimes when a friend isn't talking to you for a little bit, don't focus on what the friend is not doing with you. Maybe look at it like, you know what? I'm not going to act like that friend doesn't care about me anymore. Maybe God's trying to get me to focus more on God than that friend in that moment. You follow? He wants you to show these characteristics. You know, how many of you, ever, how many of you have ever had your patience tested to the limit? Anybody ever been there, right? You know. You're like, you get done. I am done. Quit. You know, it's like, you ever heard that? If you pray for patience, watch out. You know what I mean? Um, but seriously, it's true. There are people, of course, nobody here, I'm sure. Nobody listening. Nobody listening. There are people that sometimes have an issue with patience. I will promise you, write this on your arm. Do whatever you need to do. It is reality. Know this to be true. If you want to grow in Jesus Christ, if you want to get to know him better, if he's truly your Savior and your Lord, I promise you, he, because he loves you, is going to have people in your life that are going to get on your last nerve so that you can learn how to express the fruit of patience. So when that person is getting on your... Now, don't go, I'll be that person. I willingly will submit to the Lord and go get on everybody's last nerve. That is my gift. You're welcome. No, baby. That's not you. No, no, no. No, no. But for you, you're not supposed to be that person. But for you to grow in Christ, when you have a person in your life that's getting on your, just your last nerve, when you go to bed at night, when you get there and you're saying your prayers, do this. Thank you, Jesus, for putting so-and-so in my life so that I can learn to be more patient like my Savior. Hello? Thank you, Jesus, for putting that person in my life. There are people that he may put in your life where you have to show kindness, and honestly, they don't deserve it. But you still have to show kindness. So when Jesus puts them in your life, those people, again, that just treat you like garbage, at night say, thank you, Jesus, 
that you're allowing me to endure this situation that I might learn what it means to be more kind. Thank you, Jesus. He wants you to bear fruit. But that's not the only thing that is fruit. The love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's not the only fruit that you can show. It's part of the fruit. You will show that. Okay? But there's another part of fruit that's going to come out of you. If you're getting to know him, if you're growing in Jesus, naturally, the word of God is going to start coming out of you. You're going to be talking to somebody, and all of a sudden, part of a scripture is just going to come out of your mouth. Because that shows that you read what? The Bible. The Bible. I just, I don't know any scriptures. Baby, you're the only one that can fix that. You want to get to know him better? You want to bear fruit that glorifies his name? Get to know this. And if your honest, honest prayer is, Jesus, I want to know you more. Watch him remove things from your life to where you're, I feel like I have nothing ever to do. That might be a sign of God saying, you do have something to do. You said you wanted to know me more. Start knowing. Start knowing. And you're also going to find yourself matching up to this. You know, when we were serving a lot of stuff this summer, just with random trips and all those kind of things, Colossians 3 just kept coming to me over and over and over. And I began to tell people, that are like, I just don't really know how to live for God. So what I told them was, in fact, some of you are in this room because I told some of y'all too. <coughs> Go to Colossians chapter 3 and read verses 1 through 17. Read them in the morning. Read them at night. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17 you don't need to go there right now, but write it down. Read it in the morning and read it at night. You want to know how to live for Christ? You truly, I just don't know how to live for Him. Colossians 3, 1 through 17 will tell you this is how you live for Him. You put these things to death. You clothe yourselves with these things. And then, as you read that over and over and over, you're naturally going to start to apply it to your life. And then all of a sudden, people are going to be like, whoa, whoa. Kristen, there's something different about you. Yeah, there is. His word is starting to come out of you. By your actions. It's starting to be reflected through you. It's that fruit that you begin to bear. Does that make sense, you guys? It's natural. It will begin to happen because your focus is on him. And he wants that for you. But I'll get more to that in just a little bit. Okay? He wants that for you. So I want to ask you real quick. Is there some area in your life that you think he might need to prune off so that you might be able to bear more fruit? Think about it. That's just for the believer. Not for everybody. Let's go to verses 5 through 8. Again, didn't we just hear this verse 1? I am the vine. And now he's calling you out. First thing he said, I am the vine, my father's the gardener, right? God's the one coming in, cleaning the house, and doing what he needs to do to make sure that the garden is looking good. Now he's saying, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will. May? Does it say may? No. Can? No. He will bear much fruit. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Verse 6. If anyone does not remain in me, well, he's like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. <coughs> If you remain in me, hearing this remain a lot, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. Verse 8, this is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. 
Straight up. Verse 5. Go ahead and throw verse 5 back up there for me. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. Who's the vine? Jesus. He's it. He's the vine. A branch is useless. A branch is lifeless without being connected to the vine. You follow? A branch is lifeless without it. If you're not connected to the vine, you have no life. Huh. I don't know. Have we heard something like that before? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The life. Okay? The life. You don't have Jesus. You don't have life. We are nothing without him. And we need to know that. He has got to be our source. A lot of people want to depend on other people. You follow? A lot of people want to depend on others. I've got to have this person I look to. You know what? Man's going to fail you. Do you know that? And you want to know how you should know that man's going to fail you? Are you perfect? No. So are you going to make mistakes? Does that give you an excuse to go make mistakes? No, well, we're man and we're made in sin and we will fall. We will fail you. That's why you can't connect just to me. You've got to connect to him. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He's our life source. What is your life Say about what you're connected to. The branch that you are, <coughs> does it show that you're connected to the true life source? Some of us like to have people depend on us. Oh, they need me. Oh, yeah, they do. It's true. You know what I'm saying? You know that. They try to get all that. Guys, straight out. It's okay if Tanner wants to lean on me and depend on me for a moment. But if I'm a branch connected to the vine, what do I want to make sure he's truly connected to? The vine. Because if he's connected to me, will that give him the life that branch really needs? No. Now, do we need to be dependable? Do people need to know that they can depend on us? Like, they can count on us? Right, because we're supposed to be like Jesus, right? We are supposed to be like Jesus. They need to know. If you're a Christian, I expect to see these things come out of your life. That's a good thing to be dependable. But if you truly know Jesus, while you're going to be dependable, yes, you can absolutely lean on me. While he's leaning, I'm intentionally going to take his arm and make sure he's connected to the vine. Because ultimately, he needs Jesus a whole lot more than he needs me. Amen? All right? Are you one of those people that likes everybody depending on you? That's okay if you're connecting them to the vine. Because you don't have the sustaining life power that Jesus Christ has. Huh? Hello? All right. Now, keep moving. Verse 6. Verse 6. This gets really, really just straight out to it. If anyone does not remain in me, he's like a branch that's thrown away and withers. They're picked up, thrown in the fire, they're burned. In other words, here's that branch. I'm going to use this nice, beautiful cup. Welcome to the Wendy's branch. Okay? So here's my branch. This is the branch. And actually, I'm going to do better than that because I don't want to ruin possible sweet tea. Can be true. Here's my branch. Okay? Here's my branch. This right here, does this do me any good right now? No. This is absolutely useless right now in the state that it's in. Correct? Correct? So if it's useless, I need to get rid of it. This is a hard truth that y'all need to get up right now. Make sure you understand. If you're not going to remain in Jesus, if you're not going to remain in Him, can you understand why the Scripture says thrown away, burnt up, gotten rid of? 
Can you understand why it's saying that? Because if I'm a branch, if, oh, David's a believer. Oh, Chase is a believer. Jeanette is a believer. But between the three of us, we're all branches, we're all growing, we're all starting to bear fruit. All of a sudden, I disconnect from the vine and I am a wifeless. But I'm still a branch. Am I a branch like they're a branch? No. Am I able to give off the life that I'm supposed to be able to give? Bear the fruit that I'm meant to give? But you still see the branch. How is a non-believing world going to understand that this dead branch is just like the ones that are alive? <coughs> Follow that. I'm a lifeless branch doing nothing. Can you understand why God would then say, we need to get rid of the dead branch? Is that being ugly to the dead branch? No. Not at all. Does he want dead branches? No. no way. And honestly, if you're truly connected to the source of life, you may go through seasons, just like the trees outside that we have, bearing the, the little pear trees that we have outside. During certain seasons, doesn't really grow any fruit. Does it mean it's worthless? No. It's just going through a season of time. That's all it is. But you can guarantee as the seasons change, the right elements take place in its life, all of a sudden fruit begins to bear again. That's different. That's different. Seasons happen. If I'm truly connected to the vine, why would I want to let go of that? You follow? I do believe 100% and once saved, always saved. Because if I'm truly connected, if I am part of the body, my finger's not just going to fall off. Hello? It's part of the body. It is what it is. It's here. It has to be cut off and removed to no longer be a part of my body. Okay? Guys, sometimes, He's got to take care of the dead branches that are not bearing fruit because he doesn't want any confusion. Are you living a life? Yes, we all fall. Are you living a life where there is no confusion who you're connected to? And if you're not a believer, for you, the great thing is, is you can actually connect to the vine. And you can start that relationship. He wants you to be one of his branches. He wants you to know him. He wants you to connect to him. I'll hit that just a little bit more. Verse 7. Verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you. If you remain. Okay? His word must remain in you. How does his word get into you? By the Bible. Through hearing it spoken to you. By hearing the word spoken, okay? It also gets into you by reading, right? By reading the word, okay? As you read it, as you hear it spoken, the word gets into you. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish. A lot of people take this verse and they think, yeah, sweet. If I'm going to abide in Christ, if I'm going to live in Christ, watch it. I can say, I want a new car. Hook me up, God. I give me a new car. Because you said, ask whatever you wish and it'll be given you. Who am I trying to please? If I'm saying, hook me up with a car, I'm good to go. Check me out. Because God, I'm, I'm remaining in you. I'm letting your word remain in me. So you said, give me whatever I want. That's not really how it works. If I'm truly remaining in him and his words are remaining in me, do you know why I'll get whatever I ask for? Because I want him. Because I want him. Now, can he bless you with stuff? Oh, absolutely. He absolutely can bless you with stuff. There's no question. 
But if you're coming to God for Him to give you stuff, you're not going to my Father God. Because my Father God, He already gave you all you need when He gave you Jesus Christ, His Son. He gave you all you need when He gave you Jesus Christ, His Son. So if I'm really looking at Him, if I'm striving for Him, my requests, my heart is going to continually, growing more and more, become more after <coughs> Him. And so when I am wishing for something, what I'm wishing for is really based on my faith in Him. So most of what I'm wishing for is going to be, God, help me be more like you. God, help my words be more like your words. God, you know that I failed you there. Father, forgive me of that sin and help me next time to get it right. And I guarantee you, God will give you a next time. He will. God answers our prayers. He does, always. And He's faithful. But you want it to be about Him. But I promise you, if you're looking for Him, there's no question. He'll give you what you wish. Because He wants you to have Him. Finally, verse 8. Here's the deal. This is the whose glory? This is the whose glory? Father. This is the whose? Father. This is in my Father's glory. This is, God. this is Jesus talking. This is the red letter words. Okay? This is to my Father's glory. In other words, when you bear fruit, it makes Him look good. Right? And who ought to be high and lifted up? God. So, duh. I don't, God's just not helping me walk with Him. Oh, no, baby. He wants you walking with Him. Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. When Jesus is lifted up in your life, people are going to come, yes, towards you, but really to the cross that you're lifted high of Jesus Christ. <coughs> They're going to come to Him. He's lifted up. It makes Him look good. It's about Him. He wants this. That you're showing yourselves to be His disciples. He wants that. He doesn't want somebody to go... What? You're a Christian? Really? He wants when somebody's looking at you to go, that girl's a believer, man. They ain't no question. She knows Jesus. How do you know? Did she tell you? She didn't have to. But let's go ask. But I guarantee you, she didn't have to. Watch how she acts. And that takes time. It takes time to bear fruit. It's true. You plant a little tree... Plant a little grapevine. It's not immediately, boom, here's grapes. No. Don't have it that way. It takes time. It takes care. But I guarantee you, if this guy right here is going to go out and make a garden, which not going to happen, but <laughs> in the event that I'm going to go out and make a garden, all right, I go out there and I'm taking all my time to get this Great vine woven into all the whatever that they have to do with vines and whatnot. And I do all that. First of all, I promise you one thing is for sure. I'm going to do what it takes to take care of that vine. Why? Huh? I took the time to put the vine there. If I'm going to take the time to put the vine there, of course I'm going to make sure that I water it. Put the right light on it at the right time. The shade on it at the right time. I'm going to make sure that I am babying that thing. Otherwise, I wasted my time putting out the vine. Did you hear what I just said? God does not waste time. God gave us Jesus Christ. He gave us the vine. God will do whatever it takes to make sure the vine can flourish. Now he's going to prune the dead areas. It's going to happen. 
It happens with random churches all the time. I'm waiting for the day for that one church, and I believe it's in Kansas, that there are protests and soldiers' funerals all the time and all that business. Normally, I don't want to go down these roads when I'm preaching, but I'm going to call that out. I don't know how you as a believer can go protest a funeral. I don't get that. And there's not one verse of scripture that helps me want to support that thought. And there will be a day that I believe they will be pruned because of their, because of their sin. What will our day be like? Hello? If we take care of the vine, if we take care of those pieces that need to be pruned, and the vine's going to flourish. But if we don't, it's not. But it's to his glory that we do bear fruit. He wants it. Because that church in Kansas, when it blows up, goes away, whatever happens to it, when that moment happens, non-believers are going to go, see, that's what all Christians are like. Who cares about that? He doesn't want you to not bear fruit. Because he wants, it's his glory. People are going to look at you and go, man, you absolutely know me. There's no question, JJ, that you're mine. He's, you're going to show it. It's to his glory. He'll do his part. Will you do yours? That, baby, is why we're talking about abiding. Because how do I make sure that as a branch... I'm connected and taking care of what God gives me. That I may bear fruit in His name. Not my name. My name's worthless. His name in me, oh, hopefully it's beautiful. So how do I do it? First off, I've got to belong to the vine. I've got to belong to the vine. If you are in here, if you're hearing this, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, if you've never had that moment in your life where you said, you know what? I know I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I know Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Because see, all our sins fall short of the glory of God. But the free gift of God is the eternal life of Jesus Christ our Lord. So I know that I sin. And while I deserve death, ways to sin death, I want his life. And not just heaven. It's not a fire insurance policy. Remember what I said in the beginning, John 17, 3? Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I want to be with him. So Jesus, will you come into my life? I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. I'm believing in my heart. God raised him from the dead. Then I know I will be saved because he says it. He says it. With the heart you believe in, you're justified. When you believe that he died on the cross for your sins, you believe that he paid for your sins so you don't have to be clean. You get made new. You're new. And with your mouth, you confess him as your Lord, resulting in your salvation. It's that easy. You give him your life. Straight up. And if you've never done that tonight, Come talk to me. Go talk to one of the adults. I mean, go talk to one of your team leaders. But all you really have to do is just ask him to come in. Receive him as Savior and Lord. But once you're connected, it's time to start growing. It's time to start abiding. Once you belong, it's time to start abiding. And we want to help you do that. One of the ways we're going to try to help you in this season of freedom and if you miss a week or something happens, we're actually going to start posting them as well um, online. Um, and if you don't have access to getting onto Facebook, um, let me know. We can maybe even just, I can email you. If you give me your, if we can write your email address down and say, I want you to email me the quiet times and we can email them to you. But basically, starting tomorrow, this right here, this first page starts tomorrow. And it's connect to start living. And the, ver the first verse, so for the devotion for tomorrow, is John 15. We ended with verse 8. It's 15, verse 9. And basically, it's just a devotion to help you know Him more. Some of you are like, I don't know how to know Jesus more. 
You read his word, you think about it. Those of you I know that are on Facebook, man, back in July, when some things started going down, my heart of hearts said, I need to start putting scripture out there left and right. Just to encourage. And I know a lot of y'all have been on Facebook, have seen it, and y'all talked to me about it and stuff too, which would be pretty cool. Um, been some sweet fruit from it that I didn't intend, which is cool. It's to whose glory? It's to God's glory. Somebody posted the other day on one of the verses on Sunday. They go, thank you so much. I used three of these verses in my Sunday school lesson this week. Somebody back in Texas said that. I'm like, didn't even know they saw the status things that I was putting up there. Sweet. Because it's God's word and God's word does not return void. But I'm putting scripture out there left and right with a word of encouragement. With And some of them do have, you can live this way, but it's not how you want to live. If you live this way, man, this will bring honor and glory to him. Because my heart just really got convicted to keep everybody's eyes on Jesus. Period. Period. The only reason to use scripture is to make sure that you and anybody else are just focused on Jesus. Scripture's not a weapon. Scripture's an awesome opportunity to know him. And we want people to know him. To draw near. Now, if there's something in the scripture that convicts you, deal with that and then look at the other part that draws you near and hope to help you live more. So we have these tonight. We've got tons of copies of these. So that you can take this week's, and it goes day by day all the way to next Wednesday. And next Wednesday's devotion, kind of how it works, is as you go through the week, it plays off of what you are receiving tonight from the Word. And it goes, and next week when we talk about how to abide when things get hard, the devotions are going to guide you towards that message next month, next Wednesday. It's intentional. How many of you have friends at school that, or friends in your neighborhood, whatever, that you know they've got a hard time going on in their life right now? Anybody know anybody? Right? <clears throat> That's what next week is about, how to abide when it's hard. And somebody may be like, well, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to hear that stuff. All he's doing is telling you how to abide when things get really hard. We know for a fact the only way you're really going to live through anything is to be able to live, meaning you've got to have life, meaning you have to have who? Jesus. But everybody goes through a hard time. We're going to talk about that next week and how to live when things are hard. Bow your head and close your eyes. Father God, I just thank you so much that you want us to connect to you.